Hi guys, I'm back today. I'm a couple minutes late for the live, but I have my beautiful post-it wall of fame here. So here, look at that. All my green post-its at the top, the first row are actually gone. So I'm done that one. And today is day seven. So as soon as a couple people sign on here, we're gonna do the honors of ripping that one off as well. Oh, I'm a little, I'm a little, you know, a lot of things happening today. Today's topic, hi guys, I saw a couple of you guys just sign on. We're on day seven of the water fast today. Hi, eight people are on now. I was just saying that I have my wall of fame over here and the cool thing is that the first seven post-its, the first five post-its at the top of here are all gone and that one's gone, that one's gone, so we can now remove day seven from the list and stick it elsewhere. Today, I would like to talk about mental clarity because one thing, wait, maybe I can, actually, I think I'm gonna sit down. My house is messy I was filming some stuff, doing some experiments. Hi, hi guys. Yeah, day seven is down now. So today, one topic that I wanted to address is toxic things in your life because when you start to fast, you start to realize that there are more important things in your life and some things are holding you down. So whether it's a toxic situation, a toxic relationship, toxic workplace, toxic friends, there's always gonna be some toxic things in your life that are kind of inevitable. And it's important to actually take the time to realize, yeah, Shreya needs to talk about that today. Honestly, it's been tough. Jeremy just said he's 233, which is phenomenal. Jeremy, how much have you lost so far? You're doing such a good job. Nicole's here from Ohio. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I'm a little out of breath. It was a really disgruntling day. And today I faced a lot of different obstacles when it comes to toxic workplace because unfortunately I've been working somewhere for a while now and I'm a salesperson. So I've been performing super, super well. I sold almost a million dollars in sales this year yet I am always faced with a lot of bullying and harassment at work, which is pretty upsetting for me. So anyway, so that's kind of like my day today, which wasn't very fun, but I wanted to talk about really like spending the time to clear out your thoughts. And while you're fasting, you really start to focus and put things in perspective and realize that there's more to life than hanging on to those toxic things in your life that you don't need. Sometimes you'll have a very close friend, for example, who you think is a very good friend of yours, but they seem to sabotage you all the time. So I know a lot of people told me about this every time you're starting a diet or something, or you're starting a water fast and they just kind of like try to put food in your face. There's types of people like that. So there's toxic situations everywhere. I know unfortunately a lot of people deal with toxic relationships as well. So some people deal with abusive partners and things like that. Fortunately, I have a good relationship with my friends and my partners and I keep my friend circle close because you have to realize at the end of the day, you're only going to have a couple loyal people that you can count on. And I think when we get to our age, we start noticing those things. So when you start to water fast around day seven is when I really start to feel the mental clarity truly kicking in because your start, your thoughts start to get a little bit less jambled and you start to understand better about the purpose of everything. And another thing is that you start to realize that a lot of the things that we've been taught in textbooks or that we've been taught in life or that we've been taught about nutrition, the food pyramids, all these things, they're not necessarily the most accurate things that we've been taught. Imagine in certain situations when they had all that propaganda in, for example, I don't know what examples exactly because I don't want to get into politics right now, but a lot of people were playing like certain board games back in the day that talked about not supporting a certain group or something like that. So we have to realize that it's not just in the past. These things are happening now. And I was doing a lot of research and reading a lot about this, and I'm actually making a video about it right now. Andira is asking me if I drink and take electrolytes. So as I mentioned in a couple of my videos before, if you saw the other lives, I take Himalayan salt uh, as just the salt I put it in my water. And then I take potassium, I take magnesium, I take, what else do I take? I take biotin just to make sure because my hair fell out at some point in one of my fasts. So if you guys want, I'll put the links down below once I post this video. But if you go back to lives, not yesterday's, but the one before I put all the links for the supplements that I put in the 
Yeah, a lot of people from California here today. You guys get off work early. <laughs> but anyway, let's go back to the different things that we've been taught in our lives that mental clarity from water fasting starts to make us question. For example, our whole lives we've been thinking about, okay, you have to eat three meals a day because if you don't eat three meals a day, you're going to be in starvation mode. But we remember from the hunter-gatherer period that they didn't have access to three meals a day. They were always doing that. Dimitri says he's been a couple of days in Oman and feeling mental clarity, much less depressed. That's what happens with water fasting. You get a lot less depressed. And as I was touching on yesterday, when you start to heal your gut, a lot of those bad bacteria in your gut are actually contributing to mental health problems. So depression, ADHD, anxiety, stress, a lot of it comes from your gut. And a lot of people told me, I don't know if I have any personal experience with this, but when you take magnesium, it actually tends to help with those kinds of like anxiety and and, um, and stress. So magnesium is good. I like to take it before bedtime because it tends to help me sleep as well. But let's go back a little bit. Oh, Birdie, you're doing water fasting instead of IF. That's awesome. Welcome to the pack. <laughs> Both of them are the pack because we're always going to be doing anything between IF and water fasting here on this channel. So let's go back a little bit in time and think about this concept of three meals a day. We never had access to that much food back in the day. People were going out hunting, the hunter-gatherers were going out hunting for their food, spearing their meat or whatever animals or the game that they wanted to bring back. They would feast on it and then they would have a period of famine. So they always call it feast and fast or feast and famine. Now what we do is that we gorge ourselves in food all the time, constantly, and we have this impression that we need to eat three meals a day and snacks in between. So think about it like this. You wake up in the morning, maybe you eat breakfast, then on the way to work, maybe you grab a snack because you get hungry around like 10, 30 p.m., 11 before work. Then you go for lunch. And then after that in the afternoon, you kind of get hungry again. You're like, oh, I kind of want a snack before dinner. I'm hungry. So you have a snack. And then in the evening, you go eat your dinner. And after that, around, I don't know, like 7, 8, whenever people, I think it's more around 9 or 10 in the late evening, People start to realize that they're so happy I caught you live. Usually I forget to watch and replay. Oh, that's okay. Hi, Alexis. Um, then after that, after your dinner meal, you do your snacking. A lot of people, the main thing that causes their weight gain and the excess calories is because they're eating in the evening. And the most difficult thing is that when you get home in the evening, that's kind of when the existential crisis kind of kicks in for everyone because you had a long day at work. Maybe it was stressful at work. Maybe you dealt with some toxic situations. You get home from work, you eat your dinner, and then all of a sudden, there's this like huge period of time until you go to bed that if you do not fill, you're suddenly gonna have this like void. So a lot of people watch Netflix, a lot of people go to the gym, which is great, that helps you fill the void. A lot of people work on personal projects, like for the past couple of months, I've been working on YouTube in the evening, which kind of fills that gap and that void in the evenings. And then you get stressed and realize you have to do the whole thing and rinse and repeat the next day. So a lot of people tend to eat their calories at night. So imagine this, you're eating three meals a day and then you're having snacks in the early morning, afternoon, and late night. So that's six meals a day. Who decided that we needed to eat six meals a day? At what point did it become regular to eat six meals a day? It's just not normal. So if you think back at the hunters and gatherers, like I was just talking about when they would have periods of feasting and famine or feasting and fasting, they would go long periods of time before eating. So the people who told us that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, these are the food corporations. And when you start to water fast and realize like actually, if you give yourself a little buffer period to get over that instant hunger phase, you realize you're not gonna die, right? You're not gonna die by skipping a snack or skipping a meal. When you start to do OMAD, so when you're going from three meals a day to intermittent fasting and then moving on to more of an OMAD plan, which is one meal a day, you realize, whoa, I actually didn't need to eat all these meals during the day and just having dinner sustains me and I have a lot more energy because you're not having that dip of energy at lunchtime when you're getting super lethargic after eating. Exactly, the founders of Kellogg's. Tomorrow, I because I don't wanna go look for it now, it's gonna take a couple minutes and I'm doing the live, but I actually have this chart where you could see what companies own which companies and who are at the top of the food chain. And it's crazy because some companies you didn't even know were owned by like Coca-Cola and Kellogg's they're up there. There's Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, Kellogg's. Those guys are at the top. Those guys are the ones that are controlling everything.
So scientists, as I was kind of touching on yesterday, these scientists are actually being paid internally. They're like internal scientists for big corporations like Kellogg's and uh, what did I just say? Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble. These guys, General Mills, those guys have insider scientists that are telling people, okay, this is what I want because I want people to come buy my food. So you need to make your studies align with this regardless of what it takes to fudge those numbers. So they go ahead and do that. And then they make things that get us addicted to it and it's very hard to pull away from it. So when you think about the obesity crisis, it wasn't like that back in the day. And I'm actually working on this like super amazing video that I hope I'm gonna post soon, but I'm trying to edit it so well. So I hope you guys share it when I put it. Exactly, it's called the Bliss Point. That's the engineering food that they're putting out in for the bliss point. So perfect texture, perfect taste, perfect saltiness, perfect crunch, perfect sweetness. That's the bliss point. And the bliss point is the point at which you get addicted to those foods and you can't stop. So we think that obesity is just something that's happening by accident. Maybe you're eating too many calories or something. But the truth is obesity is completely being factored and doctored and created by these food corporations who only care about their bottom line. It's just so sad, honestly, because we're just kind of, it's, it's hard to look at life like this. And I kind of tend to go on the conspiracy side of things sometimes, which is kind of ridiculous. But the more you think about, okay, I've been lied to about eating three meals a day and I've been lied to about the low fat industry because fat is actually good for me and sugar is the issue. So when you see all these lies that we've been told and the way that we're living based around these lies and how we used to be like slim and healthy and now we're turning into like obese and sick and getting closer to death every single day because we're eating all these foods that are causing us so many health issues down the line, that's when you start to think, what else are they lying to us about? And it's, it's just kind of sad at the end of the day to realize that we're not that important in the big scheme of things because people really care about money. And yeah, you're just saying the dark side of capitalism, you have to sell stuff whether it's good for consumers or not. So if they're making us unhealthy, making us addicted to sugar and foods that we shouldn't be eating but we keep buying, then we're gonna keep buying those. So then we're gonna go to, the, that's the food corporation they're gonna keep making money. Hi everybody, <laughs> you guys are doing really well. Do seven, yeah, cruise control starts now, so that's awesome. I'm on day seven too. Had a little bit of a hiccup today with some stress, but I'm kind of going past it. Um, exactly, make the word world healthy again 2020. So what was I just saying? I was talking about, yeah, so when we're buying all these foods that we're being addicted to from the food corporations and the food corporations telling us fat is bad, stay away from fat, eat everything low fat, and instead they're making us eat these things like sugar because nobody ever blamed sugar until we started linking it to be similar to cocaine and that addictive, right? So food corporations are number one. Then when we get fat and obese, then we move on to the weight loss industry. And the weight loss and fitness industry are telling you, it's okay, eat those foods, but go to the gym and you'll be fine. Just work out. But we all know you can't out-train a bad diet. So how much money are we wasting on gym equipment, gym memberships, programs, nutritionists, diet programs, all these Weight Watchers and Jenny Craig and blah, 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 blah. And they work temporarily, but they don't heal the root cause. As I mentioned yesterday, they don't heal the root cause of obesity, which is the insulin resistance. So what happens, you'll lose some weight and you'll feel really happy, but then you'll spike right back up and yo-yo and we think it's our fault. But at the end of the day, it's because we didn't fix the root cause, which is the insulin resistance. And as Dr. Fung says, one of the main ways to fix the root cause is actually, yeah, exactly, my, my dad's commenting on here. He said they wanna keep you sick, but not dead because healthy, and Ill, uh, Ill is profitable, but dead is not profitable anymore. So now step two, so you're going from the food corporations making money from selling us this junk and getting addicted to this junk, and then we're moving on to the weight loss corporations who are making tons of money off keeping us fat because they don't actually wanna see us lose weight. If we actually lose weight successfully, then they're not gonna make any money anymore. Imagine everybody lost, I don't know, 50 pounds and everybody's at their perfect weight or everybody lost 100, 150 pounds and they're at their goal weight, then who's gonna go invest in nutrition programs? Nobody. So they wanna keep us fat 
the food corporations want to keep us addicted. And then you go to the next one, which is big pharma, and they want to keep us as ill as possible without being dead. Because if we're dead, we're not spending money on stuff. But if we're ill, we're going to go in for constant insulin shots for type 2 diabetes, which as you guys probably know, or maybe you don't know, the more insulin you have. So diabetes is actually, it means that you're insulin resistant. Type 2 diabetes, it means you're insulin resistant. In, insulin resistant. It means you have too much big pharma happy about the medic. Yeah, exactly. Big pharma is not happy about people being medication free. And they don't want to tell people that you're going to get healthy by fasting because fasting means you're not eating. You don't need to go to the gym. So you don't need to buy that junk. And then number three is that you don't need to go uh, to buy medication. So eat three SAD meals a day, standard diabetes. Yeah. Yeah, my dad's like, my dad's awesome. Honestly, he got me onto fasting. So if you guys see his comments, like listen to that because he's a genius. He reads about this all day, all night. And I'm so grateful that you taught me, even though it took me three years to believe you because at the beginning I thought my dad was crazy and I thought he wanted me to be in starvation mode and stuff. But I'm going to come to tears because honestly, he was telling me for so long and he kind of got hopeless that I wasn't listening. But once I listen and I've had so much success so far, so that's why I want to spread it with people and all the naysayers who think this is fake, it's not fake. So the what I was talking about is type two diabetes means that you have too much resist, uh, too much insulin, which is your insulin resistant. And then what they do as a cure is that you go to the doctor, okay, and they give you more insulin. So what happens when you have more insulin? Then you're gonna become more insulin resistant. So. It's kind of like uh, Jason Fung talks about this analogy where it's similar to being an alcoholic. So when you're an alcoholic and you're kind of having withdrawal symptoms from quitting alcohol, if you give an alcoholic more alcohol, their symptoms will feel better, but the alcoholism will get worse. So this is the same thing for type two diabetes. So in this case, they'll have these withdrawal symptoms because of their type two diabetes, let's say, and then they're giving them more insulin and making you pay for that insulin. So it's making the symptoms better and it makes you feel better and the blood sugar is temporarily getting better. But at the end of the day, you're making the diabetes much worse. So over time, first of all, these people are gaining a ton more weight and going back to their doctors and saying, listen, you told me that I have to lose weight for diabetes, but I'm gaining more weight. So what do I do about that? And then another thing, oops, someone's walking into the house. Oops, I just logged off. And then the second thing is that the more you have this insulin, you kind of go over more and more and then you start needing more insulin in order to feel those relief symptoms. So the more you need insulin, the more you're going to need insulin later on. So the diabetes gets worse and worse and worse and you're going to be on a lot more... Oh my gosh, my dog is literally throwing up next to me. Are you okay, buddy? Hello? Hello? Hey? Are you okay? Oh. Are you okay? Sorry, sorry. Hey, 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 come here. Are you okay? Hey. <gasps> okay, I might cut this live short. I don't know what he ate. Hey, <gasps> buddy. Oh no. Sorry. Any fasting tips from metformin? My mom's on it and can only do IF because of my. Hey, are you okay? Come here. Are you okay? Come here. Are you okay? Honey? 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 Can you take care of the dog? Oops. Are you okay? Oh, he's all jolly now. Sorry, guys. He's all jolly now and he's running around the house like super jolly. I think he just drank too much water. Okay, um, I kind of lost my train of thought here. So what are we talking about now? Uh, 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 I think my dad was taking care of the chat while I was dealing with that. Um, what's new? What do you guys want to talk about now? Any other topics that you guys want to talk about? Because my train of thought is completely gone. Oh, any fasting is good? Yeah, okay, so we, one of the questions I just got is about what your mom can do because she can't do water fasting so any type of fasting actually works you can do intermittent fasting even omad will help it so if you put her on like an omad plan or even like a intermittent fasting plan where she eats two meals a day which is lunch and dinner it's still good for her 
So tell her if she wants, if she's able to kind of work her way up to eating two meals a day with no snacks. And if she is able to further on, you can try to ask her to get onto OMAD. So she'll feel good like that. And that will help her because we've actually had a lot of people in this group that have successfully reversed their diabetes thanks to this. So they've reversed their diabetes even in our group since recently, since this summer. They've T best thing for TA2 is fasting to reverse. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm reading the comments. So, just tell her if she wants to do some intermittent fasting. There was sure. No, okay, so I'm actually Turkish, but like originally Turkish. Like, my mom is Turkish, my dad's half Turkish, but I was born and raised in Canada, so I'm pretty Canadian. That's why my English is great. My Turkish actually sucks. Ama Türkçe konuşmamı istiyorsanız o zaman Türkçe konuşabilirim. Ama Türkçe o kadar iyi değil. <laughs> um, Ludmilla, if you guys, uh, if you guys want the calendar, just send me the send me your email at fastforwardhealth at gmail .com and I'll send you the calendar like that. In parallel universe, everyone is super. I missed your comment, mommy. <laughs> my parents are watching my live all the time. But yeah, so I like I was saying, someone in our group actually was able to reverse their diabetes. So they went from diabetic, type two diabetic, and then they went back to pre-diabetic, and then they reversed that as well. So they are no longer considered diabetic at all or pre-diabetic either. So that's pretty phenomenal because that happened since just from this summer. So it shows you that the doctors are prescribing the wrong stuff. Instead of actually dealing with the issue, they're just giving you things to feel better and deal with the symptoms, but they're not curing the actual diabetes. So that's a problem. Can you even eat junk food and whatever you want in OMAD? So for OMAD, you can eat, okay. In general, that's kind of a double-edged sword because yeah, you can eat, like you can still maintain your weight if you eat junkish food, but why do you want to put that stuff in your body? Because by eating junk food, <laughs> by eating junk food, what happens is that you're putting all these negative things in your body, negative chemicals in your body, and that's going to mess up your gut health and give you a very unhealthy gut. So that's going to actually turn into like depression, sugar addiction. You're going to get withdrawal symptoms from that. You're going to feel really unhealthy, anxiety, ADHD, stress. All these things actually come from what we're eating. So what you can do is the more you actually work on fixing your diet, it will heal a lot of these things or illnesses that we have. So you can essentially eat junk food sometimes, but I wouldn't kind of take like a free free card to go ahead and just eat junk food all the time because you just don't want to get in the habit of that. So that's one thing that you have to consider. But obviously like once in a while guys if you guys are doing keto or something once in a while if you have a special occasion you want to eat some carbs as long as it's not every day maybe twice a month a couple times a month because you can eat delicious foods and that's the key to keto after your fast the key to keto is eating delicious foods that are ketos that, that are keto right so i eat a lot of things like hot pot i'll eat like a delicious juicy burger but i just won't eat the bun or they actually have keto buns now so you can use that and then other things that you can do is that you can eat like tacos with the lettuce wrap instead of the actual wrap so there's a lot of different things that you can do here without kind of sacrificing the delicious taste of foods there's a lot of things you can do and right now they have so many options out there for keto foods. Now, one funny thing is that at some point, oh, Araceli or Araceli said, can I use stevia in my coffee? I think I answered this yesterday. It's better to stay away from artificial sweeteners, especially while fasting. They're just contradicting information about that, about how sweeteners can spike your insulin and stuff like that. You can do it on a normal OMAD, but just don't do it when you're doing the, the water fasting. It extends to your life and moves you closer to death. Yeah, exactly. So you can make choices, have some junk food, but if you want to get to an unhealthy side and you don't want to deal with your actual food addiction, then you can have the junk food. But if you want to start controlling your life and controlling your food addiction, because a lot of people's food addiction and problems actually start with controlling their food. So once you're in control of your health, your body, as they say, my body's a temple. So when you start controlling your food and your health, you start to realize that okay dimitri says junk food's a treat you're not entitled to it every single day you're entitled to it for your birthday and christmas and stuff think about it this way 
junk food is tasty, but you can make healthy food that's really tasty. And then maybe after this, I'll give you guys some recipes and stuff that I use to keep me on track. Because if food is not delicious, I'm going to get depressed and fall off track. You know, it's a fact. So I would almost not even think of junk food as a treat. Because a treat is thinking that, imagine like the best treat that we want is to feel healthy in our bodies. That's a treat. To feel like we've achieved a healthy goal weight, that's a treat. Feeling confident and looking in the mirror, that's a treat. So I wouldn't even consider junk food a treat. I would consider junk food a once in a, like once in a while type of thing and let the food be the medicine, exactly. <laughs> Apparently Hippocrates said that. But let your treats be things that are actually good for your body. Being healthy is a treat. You don't need treats all the time anyway, but once in a while, if you want some junk food, go ahead, but just don't overdo it. So that's what I would say. Um, yeah, all these thoughts. As soon as I start water fasting, when I get to that mental clarity phase on like day six and seven, my brain just goes crazy and starts thinking about all these thoughts and the truth and the conspiracies behind food corporations and the truth about health. And you guys will see in my next video, the one that we're editing right now. And you'll see, I talk all about it. I give a huge history about why we became obese in the first place and the studies that told us that fat is bad and sugar's good and that and that and that. So exactly, try to avoid all that engineered stuff. If you're going to a store, let's say, okay, I don't wanna trigger you guys with food stuff, but let's say you want some cookies, okay? You don't go to the store and buy store-bought cookies. You don't even know what's in there. Just, you know, make your own keto. I mean, make your own, make your own cookies at home. Bake it yourself. Use some almond flour. Keep it keto. You can literally make desserts and keep it keto. There's things like monk fruit sweetener. Hold on. Oh, do you guys want to say something funny? <laughs> While I look for this, you guys can look at my Christmas poop because I have to look for something. Jingle bells, cookie bells, and nuts on the way. It's not stopping now. Okay, I don't know how to make it stop. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but what I was trying to show you guys is that there are alternatives, which, okay, again, I don't completely advocate for sweetener because when you can avoid it better, but you don't need to eat treats every day. But once in a while, if you want to make something delicious, you can go ahead and buy some monk fruit and erythritol. So this is the powder one. And another one that I have is the, the granular one. So you can do that. Yeah, my dad says, look up Ansel Keys. So you can use this, which tastes exactly like sugar, but it's gluten-free, makes like sugar, tooth-friendly, zero calories, zero net carbs, vegan, suitable for diabetics non-GMO, natural sweetened, and low glycemic impact. So there are options here later on if you wanna eat treats. So one way to quit sugar that I always tell you guys is so important, especially if you're gonna to transition to keto after this, is that you have to know there are alternatives to the delicious foods that you want. You can make keto versions. I eat keto pizza all the time. You just make the crust out of either cauliflower or I make it out of like almond flour and cheese. So there's so many options. So you do not need to eat, like you literally have no excuses. You just have to spend the time to make the substitution yourself and find the alternative, which takes a little bit more effort, but it's gonna thank you in the, like you're gonna thank it in the long run because you're gonna take care of your body and you're not always gonna be on this constant journey to lose weight. So that's super cool. Somebody just asked me how long I've been on this journey. So I can tell you guys that I've been on a weight loss journey my entire life because I was always doing the wrong things. I've tried Nutrisystem. I've tried Jenny Craig. I've tried those beach body shakes and stuff. I've tried, uh, what else did I try? Uh, I don't even remember, like I've tried it all, right? Oh, I've tried the, the working out two, three hours a day, lifting weights and eating like five meals a day meal prep with like boring broccoli and boring rice. If you guys go back on my channel since the beginning of time, I lost a ton of weight and then I yo-yoed yo it back up because I didn't know about insulin resistance and I didn't know that, you know, working out and eating five meals a day and that crappy, boring food was unsustainable. I had no idea. So when I discovered fasting, I've been on this journey for like a year and a half, just going really slow and steady. 
And I started out at 225 pounds. I'm five foot six. So I started out at 225 pounds. I put a couple pictures here and there. So you guys have probably seen a couple pictures of that before. But I was 225 pounds. Like, you don't even know. I had trouble bending over. Like, I had trouble bending over. And when I sat in an airplane seat, I filled it like that. And then I felt like I was making people beside me uncomfortable because all my weight was always in my lower half. So I would sit in an airplane seat and, like, touch the person beside me and, like, kind of try to, like, mm, so I'm not bothering the person beside me. I started, I said this yesterday, I started developing, like, pretty bad sleep apnea. I had really... No, the chat's still going on. I think everybody just got quiet. Um, I had borderline sleep apnea where I snored like this crazy walrus monster. <laughs> it was hard to be around people or if I fell asleep on a couch or something or if I fell asleep on the bus or in the plane, I would wake up and everybody would stare at me. And that's when I started realizing like, okay, maybe I snore. <laughs> um, I was using my puffer all the time. Ever since I started fasting, I stopped using my puffer Another thing is that all of a sudden, when I gained weight, I started developing these weird allergies. So I started developing a weird allergy to crab, which I never had the problem with crab. I ate crab my whole life. And then two years ago, all of a sudden, I had some crab and boom, my whole body flared up. And then I didn't know it was crab. So I didn't really do anything about it. They gave me an adrenaline shot. Oh, the chat's back. And then after that, I had crab like several months later, maybe like two months later, because I didn't know it was the crab. Boajim, you're ruining my next video. You guys, oh, my dad is going to be so proud of my next video. Like I filmed most of it and it's going to post as soon as I'm done editing it. So maybe like within the week or something. I talk about all of that and the different reports from 1977. You guys just wait. I will give you all that knowledge in a super cool video. Okay, it's going to be like documentary style. And I'm super proud of it. And it's a lot better lighting than this. And it's a lot more professional than this. So I'm working on some stuff. I'm cooking up some stuff for you guys. Um, yeah, I had a lot of problems when I dealt with obesity. And then I got down to like 165. And then my lowest weight was like 154 or something. But then after that, I went to Japan for two weeks. And in Japan, I allowed myself to go off keto, have as many carbs as I want. Like to a certain extent, I was still kind of staying Oma with some, with some, uh, they're asking me to make, everybody's asking me to make more Turkish videos, but I keep telling them that if I make Turkish videos, then nobody can hear. And I will start making Turkish videos and I'll put English subtitles. So I think that'll be a way to deal with that because there's a huge like a huge community in turkey of people who are fasting who don't have much information on it because fasting is not huge in turkey if you know what to do losing weight is actually very easy most people don't know how first thing and main thing is just give up sugar exactly so yeah exactly high fructose corn syrup so that's high fructose corn syrup is something that you guys need to make sure that you know about because it's a substitute for sugar and it's really really bad and for example back in the day which is in my video i'm giving you guys all these things some revelations you've had from getting the fasting there yeah dimitri i'll talk about this in one second so yeah so what happens is that they used to tell us fat is bad but then they had to make the food taste good and while they're making the food taste good they're using like fat substitutes and stuff like Olean, which was patented by Procter & Gamble. Then they're using high fructose corn syrup, which comes from corn in order to add the sweetness and all this junk, all this artificial, artificial junk that we've been eating and processed foods is so, so bad. And like everything has antibiotics, even the meat we eat, the vegetables we eat, like antibiotics, 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 and it's so bad for us. Um, Dimitri's asking about some revelations that I had since water fasting. Actually, going back, so I was 225 and then I got to 154 or something lowest. That was after a fast, but then I went to Japan and I allowed myself to eat carbs because I wanted to try like authentic sushis and I wanted to try authentic ramen. And we didn't eat that much, but it's still, you know, you know, it was vacation. <laughs> so I gave myself a chance to just kind of take advantage of being there once in a lifetime and having those delicious foods. After that, November kicked around, uh, kicked around and November was a really stressful month at work. And then I started getting like, at some point, 
I don't know if it's because I was eating those carbs that I just started to get really depressed really, really depressed. And then in December was the holiday period. So we were doing fast miss, but it was really up and down for me. So a lot of different things that, that happened since then. But January, you know, it's clear for me and I've been doing really well. I lost all the weight that I had like kind of minimally gained. I had gained like maybe like a couple pounds, but I lost it back. So I'm trying to get to my next goal of like 145. So from 225 down to 145. And then after that, I want to get to 135. And after that, I want to get to I said 135 and then I wanna eventually maybe even get down to 125 only because I'm planning to have children soon and I would like to be at my lowest weight possible before having children so I don't have so much damage after. Um, Dimitri was asking me about some revelations that I had because of water fasting. So some main revelations that I had due to the clarity of mental, uh, the mental clarity from water fasting are really just not believing what I'm told necessarily anymore. So I don't believe what I'm told all the time because the things and the information, the lies that we've been told are not necessarily accurate. We've been fed all these wrong informations our whole life and we just take it with a grain of salt. I mean, we take it as a fact, but we should be taking it as a grain of Himalayan salt. Huh? <laughs> but it's crazy, you start digging deeper and deeper and deeper and then you start getting into conspiracies because it seems like everything is linked together. It really seems like everything's linked together. The food corporations, big pharma, weight loss industry, and then other things like all these other crazy conspiracies that if you guys like conspiracies, let me know. Maybe I'll start another channel just to talk about conspiracies, but I'm sure YouTube will shut that down in a heartbeat. So uh, my crazy thoughts. Eh. Mental clarity does something to you because you stop taking everything at face value and you start thinking of things deeper and where the origins came from and what lies we've been told. So it keeps you starting for yourself. What are your thoughts about oolong and green tea while water fasting? Totally fine. If it's herbal, just don't add creamer, don't add sugar, don't add sweetener. Even if it's natural sweetener like stevia, erythritol, monk fruit, don't add them. It's not good for water fasting. Um, so tea is totally fine. Black coffee, you can go ahead and do black coffee. If you want, you can drink those uh, sparkling water with no flavors. Ah, <laughs> thank you, Dimitri. Um, you can have the sparkling water. I was mentioning in one of my lives, I feel like these are sometimes repetitive, so today I made this live a little bit different and talking about different topics. But yeah, sparkling water can make you hungry. For some reason, I've, I've noticed, I think it's because it has a, like it has a, natural flavor or whatever like it has no calories no sugar no aspartame no sucralose no fake artificial sugars no natural sweeteners nothing but for some reason i feel like the taste of it on your tongue can make you hungry it hasn't made me hungry this time around because i'm on day seven and i'm so committed to getting to my next milestone so i can show you guys like my physique updates and show you guys my body i can show you guys now but i just want to show you when it's like a big bang you know i want to show you I'm trying to document like week per week to see my weight loss with this fast. If you eat one day during your fast, will you throw every, everything away? What day of your fast are you on, Milton? And what's the main reason that you want to eat? Is it because you're mentally hungry? Is it because you're craving food? Or is it because you have an event or something like that? It won't throw everything away, but also it depends what you're eating. And it's better to keep fasting if you can. But if you want to do a small refeed and what you do on that fast is going to be more bone broth, green veggies, nut butter, nuts, and um, some kimchi. You could do avocado with oil. Those types of foods will be okay if you do like a refeed, but it just depends. I was dizzy and I tried salt. You're on day five. Try to listen to your body, depending on how dizzy you are, because it's normal. If you stand up that you get a bit lightheaded, so it's totally normal. Um, if you really feel the need to, and you, you know your body the best because I'm not there with you right now, but if you really, really feel like your dizziness is unbearable and you're putting enough salt in your water, and try before you break your fast to take some potassium and magnesium, see if that helps. If none of it is helping and you really feel dizzy, at that point it's better if you just break your fast, but maybe break your fast on bone broth or... I mean, the best ideally was would be to break your fast on bone broth and then keep fasting. That would be my first recommendation. 
But if you want, you can also do bone broth and some green veggies, like I said, maybe like a little bit of an avocado. Don't eat too much because you, you're not gonna be very hungry after five days. But consider that it's kind of harder for people to jump back onto a fast because after day five, it gets a lot easier. Um, Jeremy says tea helps me when I get hungry. Thank you for being there for us. Uh, hi, Brady. I'm gonna continue till the 19th. It wasn't too bad. Does one banana kick me out of ketosis? I had an emergency this morning and I almost fainted. So banana, like the hard truth is that banana has a lot of sugar in it because banana is not keto. I think one banana has like 20 grams of sugar. Can someone Google it? Cause that might, that's my phone. <laughs> but let me know, can someone Google how many grams of sugar a banana has? Cause typically like, it will kick you out of the autophagy temporarily cause it will spike your insulin cause it has so much sugar. But it's probably still under like 30 grams, so you'll probably still be fine regarding keto. Yeah, okay, someone's saying they think it's 24 grams of sugar. So it has a lot of sugar. It won't like super kick you out of ketosis. It will spike your insulin. And typically, I really urge you guys not to have sugar and fruits. Like if you wanted to break your fast and have an emergency, I know that it's kind of like a, a difficult topic because you had an emergency and almost fainted. Someone says 14 grams of sugar. So let's just like round in the middle to like 20 grams of sugar. Um, it's tough because you don't, I don't want you to faint, but at the same time, if there's other alternatives that you can break your fast on. Yeah, my mom was always dizzy and I made her start taking potassium and since she started taking potassium, she's been feeling better. I was trying fussing over the flu. Oh, I didn't see the rest of your comment, but you will feel those keto-like, uh, keto flu-like symptoms during your fasting. Uh, yeah, banana, like try not to break your fast on fruits. Try to break your fast on bone broth because it will have a lot of nutrients. It's very nutrient dense. And also it's just good for your health in general, good for your skin. It's something that's a lot better to feed your body, even though banana is natural and stuff, but it just shoots your insulin up. And it's pretty dangerous after a fast when you've been lowering your insulin a lot to have an insulin spike like that with the sugar of especially 20 whatever 20 14 to 24 grams because you guys are all googling different numbers so just be careful if you like whatever what it's what's done it's done it's not going to kill you and you're probably still in ketosis which is fine if you have those keto strips you can always check it out but they're not like the most accurate thing it's just kind of a guideline um when i post this video i'm gonna write down all the different things that we talked about i'll put what did we talk about the potassium the magnesium the himalayan salt I'll add the biotin in here. I'll add the keto strips in here. So I'll add a bunch of links to this video if you guys care to pick any up. Um, if you guys have anything to buy on Amazon, it helps me a lot if you guys click, through, like even if you're buying yourself pajamas, if you click one of those links and buy it on Amazon, then it kind of like, it gives me like five cents or something, but I like it. You guys make me happy. And <laughs> like, if you guys are gonna buy something, anyway, like, don't go out of your way to buy something you don't want. But if you guys are buying something, I get like a teeny like 10 cent or 5 cent kickback from certain things. So if you guys have pajamas to buy, click one of my links and buy it from there. I, I appreciate that a lot. It's very supportive to me for helping me with this. Um, someone's asking me if I'm doing 21 days. So that's my goal. I'm on day seven now and I'm feeling really good. So the next milestone that I want to hit is 10 days because I always break it up to make it more mentally bearable. So my next milestone is... Yeah, exactly. So just restart your fast and we're all here for you. Oh, okay. Banana is 12 grams of sugar, three teaspoons per 100 gram banana. Okay, so my dad Googled this. It. So it's 12 grams of sugar. So it's not as bad as I thought. So you're probably still in ketosis. You're probably fine. But just keep going. Like if you feel good now, just get back right. Just get back on the horse and keep doing your fast from here. And it's not going to kill you in the long run. You're still doing a really good job. So just keep going and go from there. Don't be upset about it. Uh, you had an emergency and you did that. So that's okay. How to stick to your water fast for a long time. So best way, as I was just explaining and I hadn't finished, try to break your fast up into different milestones. So my first milestone is always three days, then five days. So when, okay, once you do three days, that's the hardest part, add two more days and get to five. Then after that, you add two more days and get to the next big milestone of seven. Then after that, you add three more days, get to the next big milestone of 10. So that's my goal right now. I'm at seven, next milestone's 10. So that way it's more bearable than just going in cold turkey and doing 21 days. You can have a ballpark of what you would like to achieve. So I want to get to 21 days, but don't count down from 21 because it's gonna mess up your brain and it's gonna make you feel crazy. Natasha's at seven days too, so awesome job. Do you notice that it's getting easier now after seven days? 
So what I'm doing now is seven days going to 10 days. After that, the next big milestone is to get to 14 days. So those are just the numbers that I like because they're just, you know, three days, five days, seven days, 10 days, 14 and 21. And then there's 28, which I haven't done yet. And we'll see what happens when we get there. So right now for whoever's on day seven, let's get to that next milestone of 10 days. And I'm telling you right now on day six and seven, it starts to be a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot easier. The first time I fasted for 24 hours, I did a 10 day starting the next day. That's awesome. That's really, really good. So who's here with me that's going to the next 10 days? And then after we get to 10 days, I'll announce it again, but our next milestone is gonna be 14. And the next one after that's gonna be 21, which is a seven day gap. But honestly, after the first three days and the first five days, it just gets so much easier. Like I've become to a point where day one, two, three were kind of annoying. And then, and then day five and six were like, mm, okay, I'm feeling, oh, day four and five were like, okay, I'm feeling a little bit better, just a little bit dizzy. And then, yeah, we just take it day by day. Just finish one day, cross it off your calendar and keep going, that's it. Like you don't need to think in the future and stress yourself out. Just day by day, listen to how you feel. If you wanna break your fast, write down five reasons about why you wanna break your fast. What to do if you had a cheat day and you can't go back to fasting? What kind of cheat day? Like what kind of stuff did you eat? Did you eat really bad? Um, it's gonna be hard to go back to fasting initially. So if you're having a lot of trouble, maybe you work back to intermittent fasting. So if you're okay doing OMAD every like 23 hours fast and one hour eating, try to go back to OMAD first. When you go to OMAD, then work your way back up to water fasting and then just try like a, sorry, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's like acid refluxy. But yeah, after you do OMAD, try to work yourself back into like a one, two or three day fast. A lot of it is mental. So you have to tell yourself why you're doing this and try not to fall off in the first place. But if you fall off, just get back right on the horse. Would phosphorus supplement help to avoid refeeding syndrome? So typically refeeding syndrome, there's a lot of articles about it saying water fasting is scary because of refeeding syndrome. But refeeding syndrome really only happens to that level. If you're having, if you're breaking your fast on a ton of sugar or a ton of carbs or a bunch of fruit and stuff like that. And a lot of people on YouTube like to break their fast on watermelon, which I do not understand because it has a lot of sugar. So I don't know exactly about phosphorus, but I'll, I'll get back to you guys on that. Probably the bone broth has enough nutrients and minerals, including that, that would be fine. So that's why I always really, really tell you guys to start a couple days and do bone broth and then do some uh, veggies and stuff. I tried and failed and I can't get day three or three. I feel so hungry and weak. So maybe Mark, give yourself some time, go back to OMAD for a couple of days. And when you're mentally reset, watch my video on my channel about mental programming. When you reset and you feel good and you're calm, because maybe what's happening is that you're trying to fast more and more. And the more you fail, the more you get stressed and disappointed and it kind of snowballs. So maybe just relax, take a step back, Go back to OMAD for a couple days, do a very strict OMAD, stick to your OMAD nicely, and then when you're ready mentally, then try to jump back into a water fast. So if you wanna give yourself a couple days break, OMAD is totally fine as well. And we're doing an OMAD challenge now anyway. So that's what I would say for that. Um, I see 42 people on here and I see 17 likes. So if anybody is bored and wants to do something with their finger, you can click on the like button for me and I love that. <laughs> Mark, did you go straight to fasting or 16-8 and OMAD keto first? Yeah, oh, there you go, it's going up, 22, 23. Yeah, you guys you guys need a little bit of encouragement, hey, to give me the likes, you guys. <laughs> um, yeah, so what I recommend, especially for any newbies in water fasting, start with intermittent fasting. So start with just two meals a day Homemade bone broth rocks to break up. Maybe I'll show you guys like a live of me making bone broth at some point, but I have a video on it as well. So if you guys search up fast forward to health bone broth, it's a video of me holding two chicken feet and going. <laughs> I talked about this yesterday, but super good recipe. There's a lot of ingredients that you guys might not find because a lot of them are like medicinal Chinese ingredients. Bone broth is basically like in layman's terms, you just take chicken feet or chicken 
or whatever bones and meat that you have so like some beef and whatever and just put it in a pot of water and boil it and then you have bone broth and it tastes really good it tastes nice and nutrient dense and has a really nice flavor so when you're eating it you can add some salt to it when you're eating it it just feels nice and nutrient dense and makes you feel good and it makes you feel I'm not sure where the like button is because I'm looking at the live screen but I think it's just like at the probably at the bottom of the screen where it says like and then while you guys are here you can also click the notification bell because that's when you'll get notified when I post new videos so go ahead and do that oh and if you want <laughs> you can also click that share button and copy the link and post it on your wall that helps too what is a substitute for bone broth for vegetarians? I assume for vegetarians, I haven't actually tested this out myself, but if you make a broth and add some vegetables like carrots and stuff to it, and whatever whatever vegetables you feel like it, just put them in a big pot and boil it, that'll probably taste good too, and maybe you can get some, uh, like some salt, and even if you add like, I wouldn't really add store-bought vegetable broth, but try, Try looking up a, like a recipe right now for vegetable broth and I'll try to make a recipe about it and taste it for myself so I can do a taste test for you guys. 50 minutes. Who's been here the whole time? Last question. What's your take on OMAD with herbal tea? Water fasting and OMAD are both fine with herbal tea. It's totally, totally fine. Just don't put sugar and don't put creamer and don't put artificial sweeteners in it. Um, unless you're doing it like during your OMAD. If you're eating it with your meal, and having the herbal tea with your meal, then you can put some artificial sweetener in it if you really need it. Somebody says fish broth for vegetarians that eat fish, the pescatarians. In the Caribbean, we make fish broth. Yeah, a lot of people are saying fish broth. So if you guys, because I, I know vegetarian and pescatarian is different, so if you guys want to try that, you're welcome to try that as well. Do you guys know something funny? I have one person since I started my YouTube channel I don't know if they watch my videos every day, but I always get one dislike, always one. I think it's the same person for the past like year and a half, like I swear. So as soon as I publish this video, you guys are gonna see a dislike. I don't know why that happens. There's just one person who just like hates me or something, I don't know why. Or maybe they're like, ugh, this is like water fasting, I'm gonna dislike your video, blah. But I think it's someone I know, but it's just weird. <laughs> Oh, there's always going to be people in your life, you know? I have no idea who it is. I exercise as a hate of telling the carrier. I exercise while fasting. Is that bad? Um, okay, typically, especially for you, Mark, since you said that you're having trouble getting back. In, uh, you know what? I'm going to get dyslexic. <laughs> but if you've been just recently, like you're having trouble getting back into your water fast, maybe take a break from exercising for a while. Maybe that's why you're having trouble getting into the water fast. So do the steps, right? The steps are intermittent fasting, move to OMAD, then move to water fasting. And you could try like a little two or three day, and if you feel good, you continue. So try that. Um, in terms of exercise, I've actually been attempting this water fast because my last water fast, I did it with zero exercise and that's why I lost a lot of weight. But I'm doing an experiment this time to tell you guys what has the best results. And also when I was reading, it told me that your human growth hormone spikes like crazy when you're water fasting. And the human growth hormone is pretty much like what those big bodybuilders are injecting themselves with, with steroids in order to get to whatever, get big and stuff like that. But yeah, someone says a dislike is still a like. I mean, they're still watching my videos maybe. So, but I'm attempting this workout, uh, this fast with working out. But when I say working out, it's like super light walking and super light weights. Like all the workouts that I'm doing, I have a spreadsheet and I'm following a specific program, which I can share with you guys later on. But I just want to see the results before you guys do it because I'll be like the guinea pig for you guys, see if it's even worth it. But I am following this program. Also, there's this thing, I, I didn't buy it yet because these people want me to buy like, you know, in like 2012, I used to be a beach body coach. But the thing about Beachbody is that I'm like super anti the shakes and I've tried them before and I'm just like anti selling stuff to people. But the only thing about Beachbody that I do like that I've been sticking to for several years are their programs. So they have like this, um, this thing called Beachbody on demand, which is like basically like a database of those workout programs, which I've done so many of. And it's like, uh, it's like Netflix for workout programs. So this girl is trying to get me to join as a coach again, and I told her I don't want to, but the only thing that I would like 
is to have an affiliate link for Beachbody on demand so I could share with you guys. So I'm still thinking what to do because I mean, honestly, Beachbody coach that have a really bad reputation because it's like super scammy and MLM-y and I don't want people taking all their pre-workouts and their Shakeology junk and stuff. So I'm having like a moral dilemma about that, but I really do like their programs and I've done Insanity Max 30. I've done Body Beast. I've done P90X. I've done regular Insanity and I've had great results with all of them. So it's like, yeah, it's like $99 a year or something like that. So I don't know, like, I don't want to like sell stuff to you guys. That's why I didn't do that. Um, what are some good start? What are some good books for starting the nomad? Jessica, if you look at two videos ago, so probably my day five video, I posted a bunch of books in the description box. I'll post them in this video also as soon as I publish the video. So as I said, I'll put all the links and I'll put all the books and I'll put all the supplements and everything like that. But the ones that I recommend are, yeah, OMAD is one of the, the ones that I recommend so far are Complete Guide to Fasting and Obesity Code. They're both by Jason Fung. I'm also, I just bought Brain Over Binge, so I'll put the links below. Again, if you guys wait till I post the links and you buy it through that, if it's something you want to buy anyway, I appreciate the five cents that I get off it. So honestly, like you don't have to, but it helps me a little bit every day. Um, how to avoid cravings during water fast, Malakut. Get as busy as you can. Find a new hobby and do that because it's all mental. So some people chew ice. Some people, I actually haven't tried chewing ice. Sometimes I take salt like a weirdo and put it on my tongue and I, but it tastes terrible. So I wouldn't do that either. Um, yeah, going back to working out during fasting for Mark's question. So let me try it out for you guys and see how it's working and see if the theory of the human growth hormone with the, the like I'm literally doing my workouts with five pounds of weight. So relax about that. Um, what happened to the check-in for... Oh, I forgot, guys, I forgot. I had such a stressful day because I have a super toxic workplace. workplace. I'm being, like, totally harassed. But, yeah, binge-watching my videos work, too. Thanks, Alana. Um, green tea, salt, stop. Yeah, with salt to stop hunger. Uh, okay, sorry, I just realized that I forgot to post my day seven check-in. So I'll go do that right now, and I'll put it in the links below as well. So you guys go do your day seven check. I'm so sorry. Oh, my God, I forgot day seven. Sorry about that, guys. So I'll go post day seven in the forum right now. And if you guys haven't joined yet, it's called waterfastingforum.com. So make sure you go join that. It's a free forum. That's a way for you to journal yourself. So you can, yeah, Donna said she lost a lot. Of, you lost hair already, which is surprising because I lost hair like a while after. But honestly, I lost some hair at some point during my water fast and it all grew back. Yeah, I, th I think a lot of people deal with like workplace harassment. Mine's getting pretty bad, especially because I sold like a million dollars. For this damn company and they're like completely bullying me and harassing me so i have to figure out what to do it's like really upsetting and depressing but i'm i'm surprised that i stuck to my seven day fast like with all that stress but honestly coming on here and talking to you guys makes me feel better um no no you're not going bald so donna what ha yeah okay second fast is when i started losing hair too i promise you it'll all grow back thicker even if you're not taking biotin now i'll put biotin in the links below you could buy the biotin and start taking it um your hair will come back and it will be actually like nicer than before like <laughs> i didn't brush my hair again but when i get my dreads when i fast it gets so much thicker that's really cool so i'll post the biotin if you guys want it's like a precautionary thing you can take it every day and i promise you like if you guys do lose hair don't panic like I prom I was I, at some point everybody kept talking about hair loss and it never happened to me so I was like you guys are all crazy but then I was like oh my god there's so much hair and you brush your hair and it's like oh and then you're like oh no I'm gonna be bald but I promise you from experience it does come back like I wouldn't say that I ha like my hair is pretty thin in general but look at all this hair I just need to like take care of it and maybe deep condition it Maybe I'll make like a do Oh, look, when I do this, I get some volume popping. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Yeah, so those are my tips. I don't know if I was in the middle of answering a question and forgot to finish answering it, but I will post all the links as soon as this video posts. 13 and wanting to water fast. Who's 13? Are you 13? You're 13? You're 13 years old? Or are they 13? Or 13 likes? <laughs> I forgot. I don't know what you said, Alicia. Um, yeah, I think we're wrapping up for day seven. So go join waterfastingforum.com. 
It's a really good forum that I built. I spent time building in and creating topics. So you can go search up the different topics and add your own experiences to it. And oh no, don't do water fasting when you're 13. If you're 13, if you're underage, if you're under 18, then try with some some regular intermittent fasting and speak to your doctor, speak to your parents because fasting affects us differently when our body's fully developed. So check with your doctor, like doctors, you know, the advice that they give, but check with your parents. Maybe talk to them about intermittent fasting. So maybe just try eating your meals only and don't do any snacking like breakfast, uh, dinner and lunch or lunch and dinner and just do that. But I wouldn't go and water fast for you guys because you guys just wait a couple of years before you start water fasting because your body is so young and you're probably still pretty detox. So try not to do any water fasting right now unless you get some sort of clearance from your mom or your dad or your family and the doctor. But I would recommend really for not for someone who's a teen because, you know, when you're a teen, your brain's not fully developed either in the sense that like, I don't want you guys to, you know, develop some eating disorders or something like that, which I don't know. I would just prefer if you just did some water fasting. I don't want to give you any wrong advice and I just want you to do what's healthy for you. So try to stick to OMAD and yeah, I was just saying go on waterfastingforum.com, go in the daily journal section, make yourself a journal called like I don't know, Amanda's journal, and then, yeah, exactly, still developing, so make yourself a journal called, like, Amanda's journal, and then day one, day two, day three, just go, hey, today's day one, I feel good, hey, day two, I lost two pounds, hey, day three, I feel dizzy, but I'm keeping on going, day four, I feel mental clarity, so make yourself a journal, that's another way to stay busy and avoid the cravings, and the tip that I gave you guys earlier, if you want to break your fast, Write down five reasons why you want to break your fast because I guarantee your reasons are going to be because I'm hungry, because I'm hungry, <laughs> it's gonna be, because I feel like it, because I'm craving food, and then you're going to have a really hard time finding the fifth reason when you remember why you're doing the water fast in the first place. So those are my tips, waterfastingforum.com, check out the links in the description box, share my video if you guys like it, or just wait till I post my super awesome video and then share it. If you guys want to share my forum on like Reddit, I would love that. Honestly, if you guys post like waterfastingforum.com on Reddit, because if I post it, everyone's like, oh, you're self-promoting. We're going to block you from everything. I already got blocked from one water fasting group because I posted the mental clarity video. No, the mental programming video. And then people called it self-promotion. So I got blocked from a water fasting group, which like sucks. But you guys can post those videos for me, right? Because it's not self-promotion. You're just posting someone else's video that you happen to potentially like. So if you guys can go spam my link. No, I'm just kidding. Don't spam it. But if you guys can help me share this and go on waterfastingforum.com and share that on like Reddit or with your friends on your wall and your Instagram, that would be awesome. Um, I totally missed the last question I just got. Sorry about that, guys. But you can post it in the comments and I'll reply after because you guys know every single comment that I get, I reply to them and I'm a really small channel and I sit there and try to answer every single question because I'm here to help you guys. So I appreciate all the support. Thank you guys all for logging on and watching this today. I hope you guys are having a great day. Day seven for me, different days. Right before I go, Hafsa's asking if water fasting affects the period. Maybe I'll make a form about that or I'll make a video about that. But in general, no. Some people, everyone has different bodies, but it shouldn't affect your period. Usually, if anything, it'll get lighter. And sometimes after a water fast, you can get your period like a week late, which is possible, but it, it will go back to its natural state after. So don't panic too much, but it, just keep in mind. And I don't know why people put so much emphasis on their period and stuff. Like it's something that you can control and it's a natural thing. So regardless of whether you're doing steps and taking steps for your health, it's not going to affect your period. So I hope that's the last question that we have. We will wrap up and do day eight tomorrow. So I will see you guys next time. And I will answer your binge eating question in another video soon. If you want, check out the book I'm going to post in the link below called Brain Over Binge. So I love you guys so much. Thank you again for your support. Thank you for logging in every day. You guys are all doing a fantastic job, whether you're doing intermittent fasting, OMAD, water fasting, whether you're new to this whole thing and you're just being an observer, just to watch and see what you want to do, make a plan for the future. Whatever it is, every single one of you are taking the steps to better your health. 2020 is going to be our year. Let go of all the toxic things in your life. If you have a friend holding you down, if you have negative 
workplace drama, just remember, as long as you don't let it affect you, you will be fine. So keep going, keep plowing through. Day eight tomorrow, we are almost getting through to the next step, which is the next 10 day milestone. I love you guys all so much and I'm so proud of you guys for doing this with me so I'm not alone because it makes me happy when there's other people doing it. So I love you guys and I will see you guys next time, okay? Mwah. Happy fasting and I will do day eight check-in tomorrow and I'm posting the water fasting forum day seven check-in right now as soon as I finish this and come back, cycle back to the video to check out the links that I post to answer all your questions today, okay? I love you guys, bye. Thank you so much, you guys gave me 40 likes. I appreciate it a lot. See you guys, bye.